better way. Sometimes what what makes you laugh? Various things, various things. Give me an example. Well, I was laughing myself when I killed my mother. You were what? I was laughing when I killed my mother. Hello and thank you for tuning into the very first episode of Urban Crime Stories. Please like, share, and subscribe as there are many more episodes to come. In this episode, we will examine the horrible story of Zachary Davis. In this dark and threatening world, it's easy to forget how dangerous it can be. We move through the streets convinced that we are safe in our bubble of ordinariness, but the truth is that shadows lurk around every corner, waiting for their moment to unleash and sweep away everything in their path. Even the places we consider safe havens, such as our homes, are not exempt from this cruel reality. Shouldn't the family be a haven of love and protection? How could a young boy like Zachary Davis, barely 15 years old, commit such an unthinkable crime as killing his own mother? A disturbing story full of mystery that leaves us with a sense of unease and confusion. What drove this young man to commit such a sinister act? How many other stories like this are hidden in the shadows of the world? On the day of his trial, Zachary Davis failed to elicit sympathy or mercy from the jury. Because he was a minor and had been diagnosed with a mental disorder, it seemed he might be acquitted. But shocking images of the bloody crime, compelling evidence and the testimony of his brother revealed a chilling indifference to his own murderous act. Many people were baffled of what drove Zachary to kill his mother and set fire to his home while his brother slept. And could this tragic nightmare have been avoided? Let's start with the investigation. Zachary Davis' life and early years are shrouded in mystery and unanswered questions. Although his family seemed normal and simple in the suburbs of Hendersonville, Tennessee, there are darker aspects that are not clearly revealed. Born in 1997, Zachary seemed to be a happy, smiling child, especially close to his father, Chris. But something changed drastically. His father, Chris, had a disease called lateral amyotrophic sclerosis that left him prostrate and dependent on others in all aspects of life. This degenerative disease consumed the image of his father and left a deep mark on the family, especially Zachary, who was nine years old when his father passed away from his disease. But what really happened during this time of darkness and suffering? What triggered the transformation of a smiling child into a cold-blooded killer? Hidden details and interwoven secrets cast shadows on the true nature of Zachary Davis. The story of the Davis family is full of mystery. Melanie Davis, a hardworking and dedicated woman, struggled to provide for her two children after her tragic loss. She worked as a paralegal at the courthouse and also competed in triathlons to stay in shape. The older brother, Josh, was a standout athlete in school, while Zachary, the protagonist of our story, became an exception in his family. The happy child he once was disappeared after the death of his father. Zachary became quiet, distant, and strange. His strange behavior, accompanied by claims of hearing voices, worried his mother. Concerned for his well-being, she took him to a specialist who, after a thorough examination, diagnosed him with schizophrenia, depressive disorder, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. It was imperative that he receive medication and therapy to overcome his loss and rehabilitate himself. However, for reasons unknown, his mother decided to discontinue his treatment after only a few sessions. Over time, Zachary continued to deteriorate. He became more quiet, distant, and strange, as if trying to hide something. His gaze became icy and disturbing whispers escaped his lips. At school, he was considered the odd boy out, the object of ridicule and rejection. Though his behavior and troubling interests could have been warning signs, no one friends, teachers, or family could see past his adolescent eccentricities. But one fateful night at the age of 15, Zachary made a terrible decision to end the life of his own mother. The secrets surrounding the motives behind his transformation and what the future holds for him are still shrouded in an aura of mystery and intrigue, leaving many questions unanswered. On a tragic night in August of 2012, Melanie Davis decided to take her children to the movies in search of some quality family time. The gathering seemed normal, but no one could have imagined the dark thoughts that invaded Zachary's mind. Sitting in his chair, he stared at the screen uninterestedly as if he were somewhere else feeding the evil voices he claimed to have heard for years. Among these voices, 
The young killer claimed to hear his late father telling him what to do at any given moment. Although we don't know if the idea came suddenly or if he had been planning it for some time, Zachary confessed that it was his father's imaginary voice that ordered him to commit a gruesome act. When he returned home that night with his mother upstairs in bed and his brother Josh dozing off in front of the television, Zachary slipped out of his room, grabbed a backpack, and headed for the garage. He carefully prepared his disturbing items. Gloves, a ski mask, a hammer, a toothbrush, clothes, school books, his wallet, money, and identification. Then he took a long-handled sledgehammer, ideal for breaking down walls, and went to his mother's room, where she slept peacefully, unaware of her fate. He acted quickly and decisively, hitting her repeatedly on the head. Twenty brutal blows, although he claimed that the second blow was enough to finish her. His mother opened her eyes in disorientation, unable to look at him and began to convulse before he coolly finished his macabre task. He then left the scene with the same indifference with which he had acted, describing his actions with disturbing coldness, but the unstable teenager wasn't done yet. After turning his mother's bedroom into a macabre, bloody scene from a horror movie, Zachary Davis went downstairs and doused the entire living room of the house with gasoline, around where his older brother had fallen asleep watching television. Josh, 16, was awakened by the heavy smell of gasoline, the roar of the fire alarm, and the hordes of burning flames and plumes of smoke that engulfed the living room. Despite the complications, Josh managed to get out of the room his brother had locked him in through another exit, although he soon retraced his steps to search for his mother, who he imagined was asleep in her room, unaware of what was happening. The gruesome images of his mother murdered, her head a pool of red blood would haunt him forever. His brother, Zachary, was nowhere to be seen. He was captured about 10 miles from the house, offered no resistance, put up no fight, showed no emotion beyond lamenting that his brother Josh had managed to survive and saying flatly, I should have taken a sledgehammer to him too. As authorities investigated his life, disturbing details emerged. He had a serial killer app on his phone with information on torture methods. He was also an avid consumer of violent and bloodthirsty video games. His literary tastes were no less disturbing. Stephen King, author of horror and psychological horror, was his favorite. His mind was recreated in the dark and sinister pages, especially in his latest read, Misery, in which a writer is kidnapped by a deranged woman. During his interrogation, Zachary Davis claimed to laugh as he repeatedly hit Melanie over the head, only to later say he didn't know it was so funny. He never expressed any remorse for his actions, and that if given the opportunity to look back and stop before killing his mother, he would not take it and would certainly kill her again. There are rumors that Zachary killed his mother in anger because she was dating someone, but there is no real evidence to support this version. The teenage killer's statements were that Melanie was no longer taking care of the family, that his older brother Josh was sexually abusing him, that his mother knew about it and never did anything to stop it, turning a deaf ear to his claim a version of the story that could never be confirmed due to lack of evidence and that the defense could not use to their advantage. His childhood psychiatrist, Dr. Bradley Freeman, confirmed previous diagnoses and regretted that Zachary had stopped attending sessions. He stated that his psychosis was driving him and that he should have received medication and care early. Zachary's grandmother supported these claims, asking for leniency and pointing out the responsibility of those who ignored his condition. However, the words of the grandmother and the psychiatrist did not change the court's mind. The judge sentenced Zachary to life imprisonment for the murder of his mother and an additional 20 years for attempted first-degree murder and aggravated arson. He was considered an evil person and was plunged into darkness. As mentioned earlier, the story of Zachary Davis is shrouded in mystery with little information about his life and family. His fate and that of his loved ones remain buried in silence. Locked in prison, the young man is interviewed with distant eyes, revealing his emotional and mental instability. His sick mind and the voices that accompany him are only speculations. The darkness that consumed him and the moment when he completely lost himself are not revealed. Do you think his fate should have been different and was Zachary's statement true? Tell us what you think in the comments down below. Again, thank you for tuning in to our very first episode of Urban Crime Stories. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. We will see you again in the next episode.